here he comes to dwell in us he is Emmanuel God with us God with you God with me so this God is choosing humanity weak as we are sinners as we are poor as we are and says I am going there to that house to that family last week I told you that we need this blessing all over to go all over so that we change so this period here that we are talking about throughout the advent is preparing us for Christmas not only the birth of Christ Christmas teaches us the spirituality of a child that brings joy to life and even to our weariness to our worries it is up to us to offer all our love and service while being united to the newborn Jesus. It is up to us. Mary was questioning. I am a virgin. I am a girl. I don't know how to give birth. And the angel said, no, don't worry. Finally, they agreed. She said, okay. If this is the will of God, let it be done to me. So we have those worries. How do I live? How do I survive? How do I go on? The angels say nothing is impossible to God. So it is to be the promise of a new beginning in somebody's life. That is what Christmas is. A promise of a new beginning. A promise to me, to you, to us. That we are asked to leave behind the floods of discords and violence so that we emulate this child that has to grow in us to bear fruits the fruits of justice and the fruits of peace the fruits of encounter and the fruits of solidarity with one another. That is what Christmas comes to bring. That is why this, this important Messiah comes as a child. And that is where the message of reconciliation is put between God and mankind. Into us, into me, so one cannot be a subject to reconciliation if our mentality is of injustice and domination. If you are thinking to dominate, I must be sub having subject and they must listen to me. No, reconciliation will never work. If there is injustices, I spoke here several times, and people may think this young man is crazy. I'm not. There is no reconciliation without justice. And I gave you an example. If you have taken my wife, she is staying with you, my good wife. You rob her under gunpoint, and you want us to reconcile with you Give me back the woman. Even if she's dirty, I will wash her with the sabun. But give her back to me. And then you say, my brother, sorry. At least even if she's now third hand or second hand, at least I have something back. You have looted a bit, but you have given me something. So reconciliation becomes easy. Because I have something of what I lost. But if you are there, you are keeping the woman and you say, we have to reconcile. 
Is it easy? Is it difficult? Because I can see the woman is behind there. You are keeping her. She is not dead. So if we want reconciliation in our communities, in our families, we have to give back what we have robbed. We have robbed ourselves so much. Cows are robbed. Children are robbed. I don't know whatever. Some of those things are dear to these people. Some people lost their land. If you want to reconcile with this peril, give that land back. You have your own. Leave that one. Say, my brother, come and take it. I am going back to my village. That is where the true reconciliation is. Jesus came to give back our broken humanity, which has been stolen by the devil, by Satan. And he came and he said, I am giving you back your dignity. So we have to dwell in God who has come to dwell in us in order to live fully human. Because the scripture says, if we remain in him, his joy will be in us and we will not be very sad disciples, bitter disciples. On the contrary, we will reflect and be heralds of true happiness, a complete joy that no one can take away from us. We will spread the hope of a new life that Christ came to give us. Mary, after receiving this, she was happy. And she will be visiting. So we need to be happy by regaining back our trust in the Lord. It means to imitate Jesus, who looks at people and discovers their silent suffering. Jesus was looking into us and saw that humanity is suffering and accepted the will of God to join this humanity to alleviate us from this suffering. He is moved by our needs, the needs of people. Above all, people who are overwhelmed by injustices and in humane poverty and indifferences. We have a lot of indifferences. We have a lot of corruption. We have a lot of violence, as in our case in our country today. We are taught to touch Christ's humanity. Jesus coming to touch my humanity, it is also my turn to touch his humanity, meaning to look with the gaze, with the attitude, with the eyes of Jesus, who contemplates reality, not as a judge, but as a good Samaritan, a good South Sudanese, who recognized the values of people who walked with him as well as their wounds and their sins. When we look into ourselves, sinners as we are, wounded as we are, but we look into ourselves with the gaze, with the attitude of Jesus, we will be reconciled to God and to one another. So my brothers and sisters, today God presents himself to us as a child, to the Blessed Virgin Mary, to each and every one of us, that he is ready to live in us, to ready to live in you. What do you say? Are you ready to accept this? This Jesus who comes to change your attitude towards others, to change your attitude towards reality, and be able to see the image, the image of God in women, in children, in men, and in the elderly, in the young. 
to be able to see the image of Jesus in the trees. You have seen that in, uh, there are trees being decorated, Christmas trees, whatever it is. People are saying, Jesus is so bright. Everybody is cleaning his house. He's cleaning their houses. Because they want Jesus to find it clean. Do we clean only for Christmas? After Christmas, what happened? Christmas presents, gifts, no? I was hearing that uh, there is ceasefire beginning today and that it is a Christmas gift. I became worried because after Christmas, what will happen? Will the gift continue? Or it is only a Christmas gift? And then after Christmas, in a binyar. That is my worry. I don't know how you interpret it, but I am so worried that this is signature of the ceasefire is a Christmas gift. Now, what about after Christmas? When life is to be lived, how is it going to happen? The second question I was asking, those said to be stakeholders have declared ceasefire. What about you? The bishop, did I declare ceasefire? Did you declare ceasefire? I hope the thieves in Juba have declared ceasefire also. That nobody will be stolen anything in their house. Last week, when is the Saturday, they were in uh, our church in uh, um, uh, Nyakuron West. The priests were put down under gunpoint. Moreover, white men. For me, a black man, I will understand. A South Sudanese, I will understand when I'm put down. But when you put down a, a white man, it is different. It is different. These are missionaries who came here to help us evangelize. And now we are putting them down. Here, here in Yokuron West, during the day also, 11 o'clock, they know that at night, the police are patrolling. So they are now going to, to the compound of people during the day. You declare ceasefire, Jama. Aramiat. Declare ceasefire also. So that we, we are able to be peaceful. And it should not be just now, but forever. Because Jesus is coming to live in us forever. So we pray, we pray this Christmas that this attitude that we have, the attitude of destruction, the attitude of corruption, of robbery, of stealing, of destroying and, and doing all those kind of things, I think should end with this Christmas. Radio Mekita.